Right here. You good? Yeah. Shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom. First and foremost, all praises to Abinawa, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. It's your brother Ephraim Michael Barra, the true Ephraim's on the guy, aka Thug Camp. And to my left, Bijamai Managan. So today, you know, Shabbat, uh, we're going to go back and uh, we already finished uh, going over the, the commandments, the, the Torah. And now we're about to go over Joshua, you know, and continue to read the Old Testament. You know, so that brothers and sisters can get an understanding on what we must do to receive the kingdom. So you want to, um, wait, how you do this? Because I want to mute it. Okay, I'm about to mute y'all, and then we ask questions afterwards. All participants are muted. All participants are muted. Come, come. Okay, so we're going, like I said, we're going to go over the book of Joshua. Um, you know, we're going to read, you know, about three chapters each week, going over the book of Joshua, going, then we're going to go over the Judges, different, and so forth and so on. So we already went over numbers, we already covered the whole book of Deuteronomy, we already covered the whole book of Leviticus, Exodus, so now we're about to go into Joshua, and, you know, let's get started. So, read Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of Yahweh... It came to pass that Yahweh spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Because they was on the eastern side of Jordan. So they had to cross the Jordan to, in order to get to the side of where Israel is at. Go ahead, which are on the west part of the Jordan. Go ahead. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have, that have I given unto you, as I unto Mo, as I said unto Moses. Go ahead. From the wilderness and this Lebanon. Wait, come over a little bit. If I can see. Yeah, you go. Ahead. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates. All the, all the land of the Hittites. Which are a Hamitic tribe. Go ahead. And unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. So when you look on a map and you see Israel today. And you see it looks very small. It's a, actually a lot bigger according to the Bible. Go ahead. There, sh there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So that's what we have to understand, because Moses was a man of the Lord. Also, Joshua, the Ephraimite brother, he was a man of the Lord. So the Lord let you know that if you're doing his will, if you're being righteous, he would not fail thee, nor forsake us. So give me a <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 13. Give me Hebrews chapter 13. <clears throat> because we have to have faith. We have to be, we can't have doubt. You know, we, we don't supposed to be a, a, you know, a people of doubt. We must have faith and be strong and of courage. And we must understand that the Most High must believe that the Most High will not forsake us. So go to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness. So our conversation should not be without without covetousness, oneiness. Go ahead. And be content with such things as ye have. So be content. Like it also tells you in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Like, be content with what you have. Don't go overboard. Just because you think you have a lot of stuff doesn't mean it's of the Lord. Be content. If you have you don't need to have 10 cars, like you got Snoop Dogg, these brothers buying a hundred cars. That's not being content or buying these big matches in everywhere. Just be, be content with it. Go ahead. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The Most High will always be on our side. He will, he will never forsake those that's living righteous. Continue. So that we may boldly say, Yahweh is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do to me. Read that one more time. Verse 6. So that we may boldly say. So we must bold, we can boldly say. With confidence. We don't have to. It's not a prideful thing. You can be bold. 
Like we, the righteous are supposed to be bold as lions. So we must not doubt, we must understand that the Most High would not fail us or forsake us in the time of trouble or anything. No matter what we're going through, the Most High will be on our side as long as we're doing His will, keeping the commandments. Read verse 6 again. I so that we may boldly say, Yahweh is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And we should not be afraid of what brothers or sisters or anyone can do to you. Whether it's of our nation or outside our nation, we shouldn't have to worry about um, the martial law coming. You know, you have brothers and sisters terrified because martial law is, is uh, you know, it's on its way. Or the concentration camps built all over America. You know, brother says, oh my gosh, you know they got concentration camps? We ain't supposed to worry about that. You about the FEMA camps? Don't you know they're going to put us in the FEMA camps? No, don't worry about that. You know what I mean? All that stuff is to scare you. But the most I don't give us the spirit of fear. We should not be afraid what a mortal man can do to you. Only thing you better be afraid of what the most high and how shy can do to you. You know what I mean? So um, go to Psalms 37. Uh, Go to Psalms chapter 37. So the Most High would not fail us. He would not forsake those that's being righteous. Because remind you, Joshua was a righteous brother. It was not, he just, he's not talking about any and, and every brother or sister that's Israel. Because we know Romans chapter 9, now all Israel is of Israel. So as long as you have your faith in keeping the commandments, the Lord will be on your side. So give me um, Psalms 37 and read verse... Um, 26 and 28 through 28 <clears throat> He is ever merciful and lended and his seed is blessed Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. Read that one more time He is ever merciful and lended And his seed is blessed Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore for Yahweh loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. You see, the, the righteous is preserved forever. You best believe Esau will try to exterminate us. When he came over here, rape, robbed, and pillaged, he tried to exterminate every single one of us. If it was in his hands, he would have did it. But the Most High would not cut off the righteous. We always had a remnant of our people that was willing to do the Lord's will. But the wicked is going to be cut off forever. The wicked don't have no promise. They're going to be put to death. So give me um, uh, Jeremiah 16. Go back to um, that's crazy. Uh, go back to um, go to Jeremiah 16. So I got cut off for a moment. So Jeremiah 16 verse 11. So when you're living righteous, the Lord will bless you, and and that's what we went over. He won't forsake us. He won't fail us. But you read Jeremiah 16 11. Through 13, let me get it real quick. Jeremiah 16, 11 through 13. So the Most High promised not to forsake us or fail us, but let's see what Israel did. Read that, Jeremiah 16, verse 11 through 13. Then shall they say unto them, 
Then shalt thou say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the hour, I have walked after other, and walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. So that's what our people have not done. Our people have forsaken the Most High, and they have not kept the laws of the Most High. He, the Most High said he would never forsake us, but we in return forsake, forsook him. That makes no sense. Go ahead, read verse 12. And ye have done worse than your fathers. So we as a nation, this generation, we have done worse than our forefathers. Go ahead. For behold, ye walk everyone after the imagination of his evil heart, that they may not hearken unto me. Pretty much Israel, we are doing what we want to do. That's what we're doing. We're not doing what the Lord is telling us to do. We're doing thus. We want, we want to do what we want to do. We want to do everything contrary to the word of the Most High instead of keeping his commandments. Go ahead. Therefore will I cast you out of this land. And so that's why we was cast out of the land of Israel. Go ahead. Into a land that ye know not. Uh -huh. That's why we all over here, we outside our, our, our motherland. Go ahead. Now that ye know your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. And the most I have not been showing us favor. But now that we're waking up, now he's starting to show, now the curses are starting to get lifted up off of us. But during slavery and different things, the, the Lord had us, we have to go through a horrible punishment. Because we transgress his laws, and the wages of sin is death. So uh, give me um, uh, Psalms 94. Give me Psalms 94. Psalms 94, and I believe it's verse 14. For Yahweh will not cast off his people. So yes, the Lord, he will punish us for a moment. It might feel like forever, but it's not going to literally uh, punish us or cut us off con uh, uh, our entire nation. So, read that one more time. For Yahweh will not cut, will not cast off his people. As a nation, he's not going to cast us out. He's always going to preserve a remnant of his people. Go ahead. Neither will he forsake his inheritance. Neither will he what? Forsake his inheritance. He will not forsake his inheritance because he made an everlasting promise to our forefather Abraham, passed it down to Isaac, and to our forefather Jacob, and to our, the rest of the forefathers he is not going to forsake his inheritance, his, his, his agreement. He's not going to do away with his covenant that he made with our forefathers. So go back to Joshua chapter 1. Read verse 5 again. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, with Moses so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. So I remind you, like he said, he, he, he did it to Moses. He, gonna do, he did it to Joshua and us brothers and sisters that's living righteous and keeping his law, special commandments and having faith. He's not going to forsake us in the time of trouble and great tribulation. Continue. Right. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. So you see how he said, be strong and of good courage. Be bold. Don't be all down and, and, and depressed and, and um, doubting and so don't have that type of spirit. So we must be strong and of good courage. You know what I mean? So give me um, Ephesians chapter 6. You know, I know some people might be stronger than other people. Some people might have stronger faith. You know, but our people that have stronger faith, we must build up the little ones that don't have stronger faith. Build them up through the spirit so that they can, you know, have stronger faith as, you know, other brothers that or sisters that might have stronger faith. You know what I mean? So give me uh, Ephesians chapter 6 so I can get a real quick. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Bible falling apart still. I don't know why I don't use my other one. But. <laughs> Ephesians 6 and uh, verse 10. So read that all the way down to 17. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 17. Finally, my brethren, be strong in your hour and in the power of his might. So we must be strong because guess what? The, our Heavenly Father, 
is on our side if we do his will. So why should we be afraid? Why should we doubt when the Heavenly Father and the Holy Angels and Yahweh Shah is on our side? We should not be weak. Go ahead. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So put on that whole armor. This is more spiritually speaking. You know how when people went out to war, our people went out to war, they, 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 they girded themselves up, they put, you know, uh, war um, attire on. But this is spiritually putting on your clothes, putting on these clothes, putting on this um, whole armor of God. Continue. For we, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So all type of wickedness, people doing all type of satanic things and uh, voodoo and witchcraft, you know, demons everywhere that you might, some people may be able to see, some people may not be able to see. There's all type of wickedness um, that's going on in this world, seen or unseen. Go ahead. Wherefore taken to you the whole honor of God, then you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So that's why we must make sure that we have our house in order. We must make sure that we are doing the will of the Father. We must understand, we must examine ourselves daily to make sure that we are in the truth. Don't just uh, come to Sabbath class every uh, Sabbath, but then all the other days, six other days, you're doing all type of wickedness. Um, you know, you, people smoking weed, going to the club, doing all type of, uh, you know, you have some sisters might dress in, 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 in dresses on a Shabbat, but then dress like harlots and, 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 and so forth on other days. No, we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to be full-time Israelites, not part-time, not Saturday Israelites. And it's a lot of our people that does that. They only want to be righteous on, on Saturday on the Shabbat. That's not going to get you the kingdom. Uh, continue out. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. So I mean, uh, 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And we know that truth is the law, statutes and commandments. Go ahead. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh -huh. So that is spiritually. Just like you're going to war physically and you will be girded up, you will be prepared. Be prepared spiritually as well. Go ahead. And your feet shod with the, the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh-huh, having the fruit of the spirit, which we went over that, we had made a video about that. Go ahead. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So you made everything that's thrown your way, you will be able to rebuke in the name of the Most High and His only begotten Son, our big brother. So you will be able, anything, any darts, any, any trials and tribulation you might go through, you, you will be able to uh, go through it and overcome it because you have faith. You're keeping the commandments and you live in righteous. Go ahead. And take the, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So go back to um, Joshua chapter 1. And read verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. So we must not be focused on everything else. We must be focused straight, on a straight path, that narrow path. Because wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. So you must be straight focused. Do not allow any distraction from the left or the right. Stay focused in this truth. Don't let no family members, no husband, no wife, no nothing separate you from the Most High. Always put the Most High first. Give me a Baruch in the Apocrypha. Uh, Baruch chapter 4. Baruch chapter 4. Right at the Sirach. So Baruch chapter 4. And we're going to read verse 1. Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. This is, the, this is the book of the commandments of God, and a law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So these commandments 
is forever. You know, that's a cut for anybody that's trying to say that the law is done away with. No, the laws abide forever. That's thus said the Lord. If you keep it, you're going to come to everlasting life. If you don't, you will die. Now give me uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4. We must observe and do all these commandments. So give me Deuteronomy chapter 4 and read verse 5 and 6. Because a lot of our people don't understand that if you're not keeping the law of statute commandments, you're not going to understand none of the Bible. You know, that's why it's very important to teach and keep these law of statutes and commandments. So give me Deuteronomy 4 and 5. Read that out. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. Even as Yahweh my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Go ahead. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So you want wisdom? Everybody think they're wise or you want understanding? You must keep the law, statutes, and commandments. If you're not, the Lord would not pour out no wisdom, knowledge, and understanding upon you. You must keep the law, statutes, commandments, because that's where our wisdom is at. That's how you become wise. So go back to Joshua chapter 1, read verse 7 again. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. So we must do all the law. We all understand now that when Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ, died, he done away with the sacrificial, the physical part, should I say, of the sacrificial um, law. But we still supposed to present our body a living sacrifice, like Paul says in Romans. So he just done away because he, came, he became that ultimate sacrifice. And we also understand that a lot of us don't have no land so all those laws that apply to land, cattle, we, we, don't, we, we don't have to keep because we don't have no land or no cattle. But the ones like the dietary law, the moral laws, the civil laws, the ceremonial laws, we can still keep. Go ahead. Go back to uh, Joshua chapter 1, read verse 8 now. Right. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So that's what we that's the main focus. Anything else is a distraction. Everybody thinks they got 100 percent truth. Everybody thinks that they're the prophet of the most high. Everybody wanna be, you know, exalted and praised as men. But read that one more time, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So our success, our, our, the blessings is through the law, statutes, and commandments. So give me um, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Because everybody say, my doctrine is the truth. We got the true doctrine. We got the only doctrine that's... If that's that's of the Lord. We're going to show through the spirit of the Most High that that's incorrect. All these brothers and sisters or these camps that think they got the, the true doctrine. We're going to find out what is the true doctrine. And see that a lot of these brothers that is, 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 is uh, coming up with different doctrine that's not biblical. You know, when they try to say this is the true doctrine. We're going to find out what the true doctrine is. So give me Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. Uh. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. So we must not forget the law, set your commandments, and we must keep those commandments, right? Go ahead. Do not forget about it. Go ahead. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. And so that's why our forefathers were able to live a lot longer, because they was keeping the law, set your commandments. As we continue to sin... We, we, we were able to die lesser and lesser from people living over 1,900 down to 110, down to 70. Now people barely living over 50, 40. Uh, give me uh, 
Let's find out what the true doctrine is. First Timothy 4 and 16. Everybody say, oh, this is the true doctrine. <laughs> Everybody, this is the true doctrine. If it's not of this, it's not of the Lord. So we the only camp that got the true doctrine. We the only camp that the Lord is dealing with. Let's see what the true doctrine is. First Timothy chapter 4, read verse 16. If any man or woman that believeth, First Timothy 4, verse 16. Oh, so like so like take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. So take heed unto thyself. Examine yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And unto your doctrine, what you believe in. Let's see if, if your doctrine is really of the Lord. Go ahead. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So read that one more time. Hmm. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. And unto the doctrine. We're going to find out what that doctrine is. Go ahead. Continue in them. So in continue in them, we're going to find out what, what, what we must continue in. Go ahead. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So give me uh, Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 1 and 2. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 1. Get it real quick. Proverbs 4, 1 and 2. What is the true doctrine? Let's see. Hear ye, children, the instruction of a, fa of a father, and attend to no understanding. So hear this, right? Go ahead, check this out. For I give you good doctrine. So I give you good doctrine. What is the true doctrine? What is, what, what's going to get us salvation? What's going to get us saved? Like it tells you in 1 Timothy, we, what we just read. Read verse 2 again. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. For I will. Forsake you not my law. I don't know why I should keep on cutting me out. Let me go back. Hmm. Hold on one second. Well, go live again. <laughs> uh, we, we connected again. Okay, I think it maybe cut me off every 20 minutes or something. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I never did that. So, Shalakia, so um, read Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1 again. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. So, we must know understanding. We read. That the laws that you command us in Deuteronomy 4, that's our wisdom, knowledge, understanding, if we keep the laws that you do them, right? Read verse 2. For I give you good doctrine. For I give you good doctrine. This is the doctrine that we must all be on one accord with. Go ahead. Forsake ye not my law. Forsake ye not my law. The true and only doctrine that we must all be on one accord with, that the Lord is only concerned with, is his laws, statutes, and commandments. All these other man-made doctrines and traditions, the Lord don't give a damn about. It's only about his laws, statutes, and commandments. And if you're not taught teaching that, then you're not of the Lord. That's what the Most High is focused on. That's where, uh, give me Revelations 14 and 12. One more precept. That's what you, how we are able to get salvation. Read Revelations 14 and 12. Read that out. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep my commandments of keep God. Keep the commandments. That's the true doctrine that the Lord is concerned with. Go ahead. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Yahweh. And having faith in what you're doing. So that is the true doctrine. So go back to Joshua chapter 1. So now brothers and sisters won't be confused when people are trying to say we have the only truth or this is the only doctrine that was inspired by the Lord. The only doctrine is the law of statute of commandments that the Lord is concerned with. All these brothers and sisters that's wasting your time on Facebook and on YouTube about who is this and who is that and if the earth is flat or if it's circle or round and all this other stuff. The Lord ain't concerned with that. You can know all that. You can know every single thing in the Bible and still don't get salvation. So that so knowing everything doesn't mean you're gonna get salvation. It's one thing knowing, but it's knowing that the earth is flat around is that's gonna get you salvation. 
is knowing if Esau's the white man or the Arab is going to get you salvation or is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Brothers waste too much time and energy. And, you know, I used to be like that a few years ago. I used to always try to argue and debate with people. But now I'd be like, okay, you want to believe that? Go ahead. You want to believe Esau the Arabs? Go ahead. I believe he's the white man. Okay, whatever. We'll see when we get to the kingdom. You know what I mean? Keep the law, statutes, and commandments. That's all. That, that's all. You know, we can say it. So uh, go back to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Read verse 9. Uh, read verse 9 now. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For Yahweh thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Read that one more time. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. <laughs> That's a commandment. To be strong and of good courage. Right? Go ahead. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For Yahweh thy God is with thee. Whithersoever thou goest. So if you live in righteousness, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be worried. You don't have to be weak. You don't have to be doubting. Because you know that you're doing the will of the Father. Really, I wouldn't say all the times, but the most of the most of the majority of the time people are afraid because they they know in their spirit is not right with the father they know that what they're doing outside of camp or outside when nobody's around mm -hmm. they know that they're not doing the law of sexual commandments they're doing wickedness so that's why they might be afraid that's not all the time because you might have people that's living righteous but still just have little faith but that's different so um Give me a uh, Jeremiah 46. So Jeremiah um, 40, chapter 46. And read verse 27. Get it real quick. Jeremiah 46. Verse 27. Read that. But fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save thee from afar off, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and be in rest and at ease, and none shall make him afraid. None of us, none of the other nations is going to make us afraid. Read that one more time. Jeremiah 47 and 27. 46 and 27. Slakia. But fear not thou, O oh my servant, Jacob. So Jacob, if you're doing the work in the Most High, do not be afraid. I don't care if you have Israelite man, women, or whoever telling you you're not a man of the Lord or woman of the Lord. Don't let that get to you. You got a lot of brothers and sisters, or mostly brothers, that be telling people, oh, you're not a man of the Lord, you're not a woman of the Lord. And no, they don't just don't allow that to affect you. Continue to push on. Don't let allow nobody to try to take your crown. Go ahead. But fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save thee from afar off. So don't be afraid, because the Lord will save the righteous. He is coming to save the elect this time. This is the last go round. So he is this time he's coming to save us, not punish us. Go ahead. And I see from the land of their captivity. Uh-huh. And Jacob shall return and be in rest and at ease. And none shall make him afraid. So in that time, like it tells you in Revelation, I believe it's 22 and 3, that the Lord is going to take away that curse. And he's, he's going, you know, in Revelation 21, I think it talks about how he's going to, it's going to be no more crying, no more sorrowful, no more, you know, weeping and tears like that. It's not going to be nothing. It's going to be happy and joy in the kingdom. So give me um, uh, Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8. Verse uh, 13. Zechariah 8 verse 13. And it shall come to pass... That as he were a curse among the heathen. So we are, under, we, you know, we've been under curses. It seemed like forever. So check this out. Go ahead. O house of Judah and house of Israel. Both northern and southern kingdom. Go ahead. So will I save you, and you shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. 
Let your hands be strong. Be strong and of good courage. For he is coming to save the elect. Go back to Joshua chapter 1. And read verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host. So the officers are the rulers, the overseers. Go ahead. And command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals. Which is food. Go ahead. For within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land, which Yahweh, your God, giveth you to possess it. So he said that they was going to pass over Jordan. So you might think, they might think, like, huh, we're going to pass over this river? Let's see. Go ahead. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded you, saying, Yahweh your God hath given you rest, and hath given you this land. So the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of uh, Gad, and the half of the tribe of Manasseh. Let's see what land they was given. So give me Numbers chapter 21. You know, we went over this before when we went over Numbers. Um, but let's, uh, let's go over it a little bit again. So Numbers chapter 21 and read verse 21. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the waters of the well. But we will go along by the king's highways until we be past thy borders. So they just asked, you know, let me get, let me get across your land. You know, let's go to the king's highway, which was a quicker way to go. So let's see what that king said. Go ahead. And Sihon will not suffer Israel to pass through this, his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness. Uh -huh. And he came <clears throat> to Jahaz and fought against Israel. So instead of just allowing them, to, that's how much enemies hated us. So just in allowing us just to pass, they said, no, nah, we're going to war against them. So King Sihon was like, let's go, let's fight. Let's see what happened. Go ahead. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed his land from Arnon unto Jabbok even unto the children of Ammon, for, for the border of the children of Ammon was strong. Go ahead. And Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon, and in all the villages thereof. Go ahead. For Heshbon was the city of Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab, and taken all his land out of his hand, even unto Arnon. So to understand was... Before it was the Ammonites land, it belonged to the Moabites. So the Moabites was dwelling there. So the Ammonites came and warred against the Moabites and, and, and defeated them and brought them into captivity, they man, women, and children, and took over their land. So Go to Numbers chapter 22, verse 1. So Israel just got done kicking the Ammonites' butt. So give me uh, Numbers 22 and 1. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan of by Jericho. So they was on that side of, <clears throat> of, of the side of Jordan by Jericho. So they was on the east, east uh, side of the river Jordan. So, this is the plains or the countries of Moab. So now let's tie it all together. Give me Numbers 32. So the fast forward hundreds of years later when you go into the book of Ruth, which we're not gonna go into, but when you go into the book of Ruth and you understand that Ruth was living in the plains of Moab, which is the country of Moab, now you understand who was living there at that time. Reuben, Gad, and half of the tribe of Manasseh was living on the east side of the 
river of the, of the, of the river Jordan. And the other tribes went over the water, which we're going to read in a little bit, and went on the west side of the river of Jordan, which Israel was, and they dwelt and pitched there, and you know, and, and passed their inheritance on there. So, Numbers chapter 32, verse 1 and 2, then we'll jump a little bit. Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. So they had a bunch of riches, cattle, right? So they seen the land of Gilead, which you had, the, that was the, the land of the Moabites, but then the Moabites got conquered by the Ammonites, and then the Israelites came and defeated them and took over all of it. So jump down to verse 19. So they, they, so they loved that land. They, they wanted that land, right? Go ahead, verse 19. For we will not inherit with them on yonder side Jordan or forward, because our inheritance is fallen to us on, the, on this side Jordan eastward. Eastward of, us, of the river Jordan. So they got their inheritance, their land on the east side, the east side of the river of Jordan, where the other tribes went west. Now jump to 33. And Moses gave unto them, even to the children of Gad, and to the children of Reuben, and unto half the tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites. Well, we just read that before it was the kingdom or the land of the Ammonites, it belonged to the Moabites. That was their original land. Go ahead. In the kingdom of Og, so like in the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land with the cities thereof in the coast, even the cities of the country round about. Now we just read one verse of, of Ruth. Go to Ruth chapter 1. So Ruth chapter 1. We'll just read 1 and 2. There's two verses. And then we'll go back to Joshua. So I just want to make a quick point to remind you, Reuben, Gad, and half of Manasseh was living in the land, the plains, the country of Moab. So read 1 and 2. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. Remind you, he went to the country of Moab. Who was living in the plains of the country of Moab? Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh. Go ahead. And the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi. And the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion, Ephraimites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. So they came into the country of Moab. So... That's showing you that a lot of people, you know, it's not a big deal or not if people believe or if you want to say, um, you know, it's not going to get you salvation if you believe Moab, I mean, uh, Ruth was a Moabite or if Ruth was an Israelite. But according to our understanding, Ruth was an Israelite. She was living in the plains of Moab. And at that time, that's why you have to understand. And that's why it's good to read the law. And the history behind it so you'll understand who was living in the land of Moab, the country of Moab, should I say. And it was Reuben, uh, Gad, and half of Manasseh. So go back to Joshua chapter 1. I just want to make that uh, quick point right there. So Ruth the Moabitess was an Israelite. Just like they called, um, they called that land the land of Ammon, the Ammonites. But it wasn't the land of Ammonites. It was the Moabite land. But that shows when you conquer a land, you name it after yourself, after the people. So just like Israel. Israel was, was the land of Canaan. And we came in because the Canaanites were living there. We came and conquered it. You know, that's our land, right? So now go back to Joshua chapter 1. Now go uh, read verse um, uh, 13. Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the, the servant of Yahweh, commanded you, saying, 
Yahweh your God hath given you rest and hath given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side Jordan. To remind you, he's speaking to three tribes, uh, half of Manasseh, Gad, and Reuben. Continue. But you shall pass before your brethren armed all the mighty men of valor and help them until Yahweh have given you have given your brethren rest as he had given you and they also have possessed the land which Yahweh your God giveth them. Go ahead. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Yahweh's servant gave you on this side Jordan toward the sunrise. Which is the east side of Jordan. So he said, Yes, Reuben, Gad, Manasseh, we allow you to get this land. This is your inheritance. You want all you put all your cattle, your wives, your children, your little ones there, you can do that. But just make sure you have to come with us to make sure that Israel, your brethren, the rest of the tribes, take over this land of Canaan. Because we have to go there and subdue these, you know, these nations. So he said, you got to come with us. You can't just say, okay, I got my inheritance. You know, that's how some brothers be. They be selfish. Hey, I got my inheritance already, so I ain't about to come and help y'all do none. I'm, I'm already good. No, they're like, okay, just come, you know, um, come to war with us. And then once we get that land, take over that land, then y'all can go back on the other side of the Jordan the River. Uh, of the river Jordan, and then you can go back to your family and you can possess it and have that inheritance. But right now you gotta help us. So that's what they, that's what happened, continue. And they answered Joshua saying, all that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. According well, as- Well, it's like, it's like, is that better? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, this, yeah, it is. It's, it says sideways. Really? Yeah, I thought it would be able to flip, but we doing it on our phone, so I'm not sure if it might be showing sideways. Hmm. It's lucky for that. So, um, go to um, continue reading. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto the, unto thee. Only Yahweh that God be with thee, as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto, unto thy words, and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. So give me Amos 9 verse 8. <laughs> Yeah, next time we will we will change it right now um, for next class. So sorry about this if it's sideways. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know how to change it because I am not good with technology. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, give me Amos chapter nine verse eight. I'll probably have to put it on the stand, the other camera stand, and stand it up like that. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. Come, come. Oh, yeah, so give me Amos chapter 9. Hey, Ak, you want to get this, you want to put this stand up? You might can do something with that. Yeah, yeah put that stand up. We'll be able, I'd be able to fix it. So, um, Amos chapter 9, verse 8. So read that. Behold, the eyes of Yahweh God are upon the sinful kingdom. So the sinful kingdom, you know, this can be twofold. You can say Esau's kingdom is wicked but really sin is the transgression of the law so the only uh, nation that received the law was the Israelites so we are the sin for nation we are the nation that transgressed God's law and commandments so his eyes is upon us the other nations are going to receive their judgment but the Lord's eyes are upon his children go ahead and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Go ahead. Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. So he's not going to kill every single one of Israel. But he's going to save a remnant. The elect. One third. Go ahead. Save Yahweh. Uh huh. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations. Uh huh. Like as corn is sifted in a seed. So that's why brothers and sisters are waking up all over the world. 
Go ahead. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Uh huh. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. That's the part I want. All the sinners of God's people should die by the sword. So go back to Joshua 1 and read verse 18. Whosoever he that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words, and all that thou commandedest him, no, 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 no. he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. So read that one more time, so like you. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto the second family, unto thy words, and all that thou is, thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. That's still not going to work. Yeah, that's still not going to work. Huh. Yeah. It's yeah. That's still not going to work. We're going to have to find some a way to do it next time. Unless you want to be like a camera. I would do it like that. How long can you stand there? No. Nah, we get a chair. You know what I mean? Here. Yeah. Go ahead. We'll fix it for the brothers and sisters. John. Let me see that. Uh, we're going to fix it. better y'all is, is it is it not sideways no more it's good see if that be fine is that better let me see better that's good that okay go on sorry about that not good with technology at all. <laughs> okay. So go back to Joshua 1 and 18. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words, and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. So all the ones of our people that do not live righteous, that do not want to keep the law of such commandments, which abide forever, will be put to death. The wages of sin is death. So go to Joshua chapter 2, if you want to go in the middle of it. Maybe you can it. You can see us. Mm -hmm. Is it charging 2? Oh, yeah. What? So go to Joshua chapter 2 and read verse 1. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go through the land. Even Jericho. Uh -huh. and, they, and they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. So Rahab was not an Israelite. She was a heathen. And no, this is not the same Rahab that's from Matthew chapter 1. She is not in the lineage of Christ. Go ahead. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. So you see how we have spies? You see how they have spies? Esau has spies um, today. They got that from us. Mm. You know, because there's really no rules against war. There's no, and no such thing of a fair fight. Mm. You know, brothers, um, you know, growing up, uh, they might fight somebody bigger, they might pick up a brick, you know, like Craig did, <laughs> you know what I mean, or, you know, whatever, a bat, whatever they can use, you know what I mean, or, you know, people might want to square up, right, and it's like, no, I'm about to square up, like, I'm just, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. swing first, or, you know, crack you, you might not be looking, it's, yeah. you might get cracked, because there's no rules <laughs> to fighting, so, go to, uh, so we had spies. So Joshua sent the spies out to go spy out the land, right? Continue. Verse 4. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist 
not, not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting, of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I wot I walked not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. Go ahead. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hit them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. So she covered for them. Go ahead. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan, unto the fords. And as soon as they were pursued after them, were gone out, they shut the gate. Go ahead. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof, and she said unto, them, unto the men, I know that Yahweh hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. So these Hamites, these Hamitic tribes, was afraid. They understood that the Lord was dealing with the children of Israel. Go ahead. For we have heard how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea for you, when ye came out of Egypt. And what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sahan and Gog and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. I'll go back to go back to it. Oops. Just put live yeah. Let's push that again. Let's do it. I'll go back to it. It's good. It's like it. So read that again. Yeah. And it's live. It's live. Yeah. Make sure that plug. Yeah. Come. So go back. Uh, Joshua chapter two. What verse we at? Eleven. So Joshua chapter two, verse eleven. Come. Water. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man, because of you, because of you. For Yahweh your God is with is. He is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. So read verse 10 again, 10 and 11. Read that again. Uh, just like it. For we have heard how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. So this is the other, a, a, a heathen woman acknowledging the power of the Most High. And they knew that not just her, but her people understood what the Lord did for her in the land of Egypt, for, for uh, the Israelites in the land of Egypt. Go ahead. When he came out of Egypt, and what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of the Jordan, Sahan and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. So that was those kings that we destroyed and took their land, right? Go ahead. And as soon as we were, and as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For Yahweh your God is, is he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Go ahead. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by Yahweh, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. Go ahead. So that's what we, we must present ourselves like kings and queens. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the other nations are going into slavery. Yeah, they, uh, Esau is the devil. But we shouldn't pay so much time and put so much time and effort on these other nations. We should be focused on getting our spirit right with the Lord and getting our people's spirit right with the Lord. Our people spend too much time and waste too much time on these other nations. We must understand that even if a nation come up, you don't have to, oh, they the devil, this, this, that, 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 that. You don't have to be always quick to say that. You know what I mean? If they come up, um, you know, if they come up peaceful, you know, be at peace. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, that's why a lot of times, you know, you know, Esau will lock your butt up. You know, you out there screaming and, and, and yelling and acting a fool. If they come up peaceful, they just ask me the question. You don't have to snap on them. You know what I mean? Use wisdom. You know what I mean? The Lord t tells you, like, when you have wisdom, the other nation will look at you and be like, man, that's a wise young man. That's a, that's a wise man. That's a wise sister. Because the way we present ourselves, we're not supposed to present ourselves like, like animals. We're supposed to be royalty. We're supposed to, when the other nations see us, they're supposed to see the spirit of God upon us. Mm -hmm. And that's where we must conduct ourselves and, and act like children of the Most High God. So go ahead. 13. Done. And that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that 
they at all that they had and deliver our lives from death. So you see how because they, this woman, you know, dealt with us good, we dealt with her good. You know what I mean? If a nation, if they deal with us bad, we're going to deal with them bad. You know what I mean? Eye for eye, two for two, whatever. But yes, as a nation, they all went into slavery, the other nations and so forth and so on. But we don't have to conduct ourselves like animals out there in the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of our brothers are making Israel look bad. You know, we don't have to do that 24-7. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay. We know they're the devil. What else? We know they're going into slavery. What else? Our job is to go out there, Isaiah 49 and 5, and to wake up the children of Israel. That's our job. Don't worry about too much about the other nations. You know, that's why we stop focusing on them as much because they're going to receive their judgment. There's nothing they can do about it. Let's focus on getting our people right with the Lord. So go ahead. 14. And the man answered her, Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business, and it shall be when Yahweh hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by the cord, by a cord through the window. Uh huh. For her house was upon the town hall, town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. Uh huh. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be be returned. And afterward, you may may you go your way. Uh huh. Remind you, this is a heathen. Go ahead. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household. Home unto thee. Uh huh. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. So he pretty much told her, like, if if you keep this secret between us and, and you, that when we come into this land, we will spare you and your family. But if, it, if you allow, if you make known um, we was here and where we went, when we come back, we're going to kill you and your family as well. Go ahead. And if thou utter this, if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine, of thine oath which thou hast made us to swear. Uh -huh. And she said, according unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. Uh huh. And they went and came unto the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned and the pursuers sought them throughout all the way but found them not. Uh huh. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun and told them all things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly Yahweh hath delivered into our hands all this land, all the land. For even all the inhabitants of the country do fate because of us. And that's because we was a blessed nation. So the Lord, all the nations was afraid of us. Now all the nations not afraid no more. You know what I mean? They like, oh, these guys, they, I mean, they ready to go to war with us. Mm -hmm. Because they, they feel like the Lord is not on our side. So because of all the things that we have been through as a people, they're like, you know, we can do whatever we want to these people. Mm -hmm. You know, their, their God ain't listening. Their God is not paying attention. Their God don't love them. But they don't realize that the Lord is raising up a righteous remnant that will be protected and will take over this earth through the power of the Most High and Yahweh Shai. So give me uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. So that show that we, we show kindness to the other, other nation that show kindness to us, mm. the individuals. So Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. So that's just like, you won't have other nations. Other nations are not going to receive salvation. Only salvation is of Israel. But you're not, all the other nations is not going to be completely destroyed. So the Lord is going to have mercy upon who he has mercy. So these other nations that might be you know, or these people that that might be making videos. I'm not saying the Lord will do it or not, but 
um, he maybe could or he, he maybe will do it for them or not. That's up to him. No, none of us can say, oh, Lord, I can do it. But these other nations that's making videos saying, oh, the real Jews are the Israelites, are the black people, the Hispanic people, the Americans. They're trying to push the truth. The Lord might have mercy upon them and might not destroy them, but just make them the first slave in the kingdom of heaven. Right. You know, the first, you know, bond man or bond woman. You know what I mean? Who knows what the Lord's going to do? So just like we, our forefathers showed mercy upon this woman and her household, the Lord can show mercy upon the other nations that, you know, um, but they all going to slavery. You know what I mean? Oh, he from like a bar today. He's trying to be a... <laughs> nah, nah, nah. They still going into slavery. Israel still is the only people that's going to receive salvation. But not all nations are going to be destroyed. We need someone to be our servants. Yeah. You know, we can't make Israel our servants, right. which some doctrines are teaching. You got a doctrine out there teaching that you're going to have other Israelites serving you. That makes no sense, but... You know, teach his own. So, um, go to uh, Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 3. Uh. Now, Yahweh had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, uh -huh. and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. Go ahead. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great. 15. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. He said, I'm going to bless them that have blessed us. Go ahead. And curse him that curseth thee. And he's going to curse those that cursed us. So that's why she was spared because she didn't curse us. She blessed us. She helped us out. So we helped her out. So go to Joshua chapter 3. Man, our, our, um, the rest of our nation got destroyed. So Joshua chapter 3, so we're done with Joshua 1 and 2. Let's go to just Joshua chapter 3, the last chapter. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass, after three days, that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people, saying, When ye seek the ark of the covenant of Yahweh your God, and the priests, and the priests, the Levites buried it, then shall, then shall remove from your place and go after it. Because remind you, when we read Joshua chapter 1, verse uh, 11, it says, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare ye victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan. So he already told them that they was going to go, they're going to pass through the river Jordan. How was they going to do it? Let's see. Continue. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Which is about 1,000 yards. Go ahead. Come not near unto it, that ye may know that the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way here too. So the Lord told the, the priests, the Levites, to bear up the Ark of the Covenant and to make a distance between the priest that's bearing the Ark of the Covenant and those that's and the rest of the camp. So that they was going to prepare the way. And let's see what happened. Go ahead. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow Yahweh will do wonders among you. So they was about to we was about to show another wonder, just like when we came out of Egypt. Continue. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pack it. You got nothing. Come. On. Read that part again. Six, verse 6 And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Uh huh. And Yahweh said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will be so I will be with thee. So they understood that the Lord is about to exalt. Joshua, that's who you want to exalt you. Brothers want mortal man to exalt them and praise them. No, mm. you want the Lord, like it tells you in Apocrypha and Ezra, when the Lord comes down, he's going to put crowns on individual heads. That's who you want the Lord, that's who you want to exalt you, the Lord. Go ahead. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, 
When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, which is the edge of the water, go ahead. Ye shall stand still in Jordan. Uh huh. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, and hear the words of Yahweh your God. Continue. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of Yahweh of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. Uh huh. Now therefore take your twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man. To remind you, the ark of the covenant, you had the cherubim, which was the, the golden uh, um, angels, then you had the mercy seat, then you had the poles, which they had to carry. They couldn't touch the Ark of the Covenant, therefore, they, or they would die. We went over that before. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the Ark of, of Yahweh, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon and heap. So, them having the Ark of the Covenant, so as they put the soles of their feet into that water, that land was going to divide itself. Just like when Moses went and divided the Red Sea. So when they was carrying the Ark of the Covenant, when they went and put their foot in the water, that water was going to separate. It was going to, uh, the water of Jordan was, was going to divide. Go ahead. And it came to pass when the people were moved from their tents to pass over Jordan. And the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. So remind you that the priest supposed to have went 200, 2,000 cubits uh, by measure uh, in front of the rest of the people. Go ahead. And as they that bear the Ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priest that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water. Uh huh. For Jordan overflowed all his banks all the time of the harvest. So remind you, this is around the harvest time, springtime. So. During the spring, what does it do? It rains a lot. So it was the the water was over uh, overflowing, right? Go ahead. Sixteen. That the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon and heaped very far from the city. Adam, that is beside that is beside Zeratan, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. Meaning it divides. It split. That's what happened. The water split. Go ahead. So that, uh, like, just like any other river, like we have the Mississippi River, it's always what? When it, when in the springtime, the river is always overflowing. Mm -hmm. We always get in floods. You know, the whole damn um, downtown be flooded. Mm -hmm. So this is the same back then. The river Jordan during the springtime, during the time of harvest, it used to overflow. Um, it used to get flooded. So continue. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh stood firm on dry ground. On what? On dry ground. So when they, remind you, their foot is in the water. But that water divided, it split. So now they're not in the water, then they're on dry ground, at, right? At the bottom of it, go ahead. In the midst of Jordan. In the midst of the river Jordan. Right in the middle, they're right there, right? Go ahead. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground. On what? On dry ground. So the Lord did a miracle once again. He split the Red Sea. He split the river of Jordan. Go ahead. Until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. So he divided, he split it. He until all Israel was passed over. So now give me Exodus chapter 14. And read verse 21 all down. Exodus chapter 14. Verse 21 on down. This is another incident. I, you know, we, uh, we quoted it. Now we're going to read it. So Exodus 14, 21, 31. To show just like the Lord divided. Um, the land, the river of Jordan, and let us pass through from the bottom. He did it also and when he was in coming out of Egypt. So read that. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And Yahweh caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind uh -huh. all that night. And made the sea dry land. 
and the waters were divided. You see, just like back then, he divided the water once again. And so, at that time, he had he had the uh, the staff. The the other brothers, the priests, had what what the Ark of the Covenant. Go ahead. And the children. But they all came from the power of the Most High. We don't give uh, glory to man, but up to the Most High. We praise the Most High. Go ahead. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. Just like what we just read and and Joshua, right? Go ahead. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. So just like back, uh, just like. Uh, what we just read, that's the same thing that happened. It was like a wall to the left, to the right. Go ahead. And the like they show in the movies. Go ahead. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, Yahweh looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels that they drave then heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for Yahweh fought it for them against the Egyptians. Uh -huh. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and Yahweh, and Yahweh overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned, and covered the chariots, and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not such, not so much as one of them. The Lord killed all of them that chased after us. Go ahead. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land. In the midst of the sea. Just like those Levites was in the midst of the river of Jordan. Waiting till the other Israelites come and start walking. Go ahead. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus Yahweh saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Uh huh. So he's seen how the Lord destroyed the Egyptians. I don't see why our people are trying to praise Egypt or say the Egyptians when the Lord punished them. He punished them so bad that they're, they're not in their land either. Mm -hmm. He punished them and kicked them out. Now they damn in Africa eating dirt. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And, and stick it and do all type of abominations. Go ahead. <laughs> Still. And Israel saw that great work which Yahweh did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared Yahweh. And that's what we must do. We must fear the Most High. Go ahead. And believe Yahweh. And we must believe. And the Most High and Yahweh Shah are anointed Savior. Go ahead. And his servant Moses. Uh huh. And understand that he does have 144,000 servants out here. But, like we said earlier, they must be teaching the true doctrine, which is the laws, statutes, and commandments. So, all praises to Yahweh Nawi, Yahweh Bashem, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Hope y'all got edified through the Spirit. Shabbat Shalom. So any brothers and sisters that got any questions, I'm gonna unmute that. Just hit five. We got uh, five minutes, we can ask questions. Um, I think five. I'm sorry. All participants are unmuted. The time is 4.55. So anybody got any questions of what we covered online or over the phone? Anybody got any questions? Nobody got questions? Shalom, shalom, brother. Shalom, shalom. Anybody got any questions? You got, any, you got a question, brother? No, I don't really have a question, brother. I just want to tell you, man. This is uh, King Kwame, uh, Israel. Uh, just want to say, man, you're doing a good job, brother. You know what I'm saying? You got mm -hmm. a lot of people out here, man. You bring back a lot of us here, rooms. Yeah, and, um, um, you know, um, we just want to give you, you know, much love, respect, brother, you know. Yeah, all praises, right all praises to the Most High, man, that, um, you know, we just trying to stay as humble as possible and be sincere and hungry for this, this truth. And, you know, it's a blessing that brothers and sisters are waking up. So that's definitely all praises to the Most High, man. But I appreciate the love, brother. Yeah, man, good about you, brother. And I know you, you, you're speaking about, you know, the other, uh, all the different... 
doctors and attitudes about, you know, the champs. What I like about you, brother, what's good about you is that you just stay genuine. You ain't worried about, you know, no arrogance, no uh, who's better than who. You know, you just teach the word and you follow the laws and commandments. Hmm, and that's God, what God, I God. done before, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm drawing my, my queen, Tigger. Um, but yeah, man, you know, you're doing a great justice, man. You definitely, you definitely got, got a call on you, but you definitely got a mark of, of, of positive prosperity in the Lord on you, brother. So just keep doing what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? I learned from you. You know, so you're helping a lot of people, man. Mm-hmm. You know, most praise to the Most High. Yeah, yeah, all praise to the Most High. I'll my shot, Kevin But, brother, much love to you and your family, man. Mm-hmm. May the Most High bless y'all. You know, may the Most High, you know, put more wisdom and, and understanding upon y'all. And, you know, so that we can get out of here in these last days, man. So I definitely, yes. you know, appreciate the love and much love back to you and all you guys. You know what I mean? Because we, like I said, we just trying to... Teach the true doctrine, which is the law, statutes, commandments, and we must have faith as well. So, um, you know, much love, brother. So, anybody else got anything else to say or a statement or everybody else good or what about on there? Anybody typing? Well, y'all do this every Sabbath, every Sabbath. Well, well y'all do this every Shabbat. Yeah, yeah, we're going we gonna, to uh, do this every Sabbath, uh, go live, and um, like I said, we've been going over the Law, Statue, Commandments. Uh, we already went over the whole book of Numbers, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, um, and Exodus. So we, we cover the Law, Statue, and Commandments, um, a lot of the stuff we have on video. Um, now we're just going over Joshua, so we're going to continue to have this. Um, we're going to make sure we're going to record for now on because at first uh, my computer was acting up so we couldn't record some of the book of numbers um, but I might in return go back and, and the videos that I haven't or the the, uh, the chapters that I have not done or we have done but there's not no recording of it I, we probably go back over it later on but yes we will continue to go over um, Joshua and do this every Shabbat any other questions? Uh, type in, brother. No. Mm-hmm. That's it. No questions. So, so all praise and stuff. And now we have a Shema Mashiach Yahushua. That's the Most High in the name of His anointed Savior. May y'all be blessed. May y'all continue to observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. And I want to say Shalom to every single one of y'all. Peace and blessing, love, family. Shalom. Shalom. I'm not your father.